mathematical equation on Blackboard. Because it's very important, and I, just tell, and I tell this to my students, mathematics is, is designed to produce phobia on people. Today that we can actually run equations in a computer and see the equations behaving, performing, doing things, and all you need to see is the graphic that comes out, artists can relate to mathematics in a much more direct way by, by using a visual approach to mathematics. Whereas in the past, you had to use a symbolic approach to mathematics, which very few people can master. I mean, I was very good in high school, you know, we always got A's in algebra, trigonometry, calculus, but I remember a month after the exam, you know, I, I had gotten my A, but a month after the exam, I had forgotten the whole thing. I, it, it didn't make any sense to me. Why? What is the use of that? Why is that important? Why is that significant? How does that, how does that affect my life? In what way I can use that? And it was not until I became a programmer, when I bought my first computer in 1980, in 1980, there was no software industry, so you would spend $10,000 on a computer only to discover that the only program you could run was a word processor, you know? Mm -hmm. And after typing a few letters, well, you're going, oh, my $10,000 are kind of really gone to hell, I, you know, <laughs> you know flush down the toilet. So I forced myself to learn programming, which at first it seemed something I did not want to do. I was a filmmaker, a video maker, I wanted the computer to do image processing. So the last one thing I wanted to do was to learn programming, but learning programming was one of the best things that happened to me. Because it demystified mathematics. Once you put those equations inside a little program, it doesn't even have to be a program, it can be a script, which is just that kind of mini program that you can run on any Mac. And you can steal the equations directly from a book without understanding anything that they're doing. Just put it in the program, run the program, and draw what, what they do, all of a sudden you start loving mathematics because they do things. You see the equations at work, not just sitting there on a piece of paper. There's only very few people, most of them very nerdy with lots of pimples, that can look at those equations and run them in their head. That's probably why they have so many pimples. You know? It's like the effort is like pushing all that pus out. Like white heads all over. You know, we want to stay relatively cool and on nerdy, and at the same time, use mathematics. Well, what's the way to do it? Use them visually. Put them inside your script and run them and make them draw something. And then you start seeing the magic of math, because it displays and expresses its magic visually. I'm going to do the same thing here. Let's take a very simple becoming. The becoming deformed... of a material under a load. One of the simplest becomings of all, and we are all familiar with it. If you take, imagine that you have a spring. You know, the spring has a particular shape, you know, that kind of spirally thing, it's made of metal, it's a very concrete material object. You can engage it in becomings. You can pull on it and it becomes longer in, 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 in length, or you can push on it and it becomes shorter in length. That is a very simple becoming. It's, it's becoming deformed. It's being pulled and stretched, or it's being pushed and compacted. Yes, it is a becoming. And since we don't want to get too elaborate here with science, Let's start with the simplest types of patterns. They already gives us an idea of what we're talking about here. He was a minor scientist. His name is Robert Hooke, contemporary with Newton, contemporary with uh, Boyle, that unlike Boyle and Newton, who were aristocrats and were at the top of the Royal Academy, of, at the Royal, uh, the, the Royal Society of London, they were the ones who talked to the kings, they were the ones who talked to the you know, to the, or arist the other aristocrats and gentlemen that came as to witness the experiments, Robert Hooke was never famous. In fact, I'll bet you that you'd probably never heard of him. You probably thought that he was like the brother of Captain Hooke or something. And it's because he was a minor scientist. The guys that don't get any respect. The guys that don't get any prestige. The guy, the guy that was laboring 
in the basement of the Royal Society, creating the machines and intervening in matter and being the Fry Otto of his time. And then his machines would be used by Boyle, by Newton, by the prestigious ones to get even more prestige for themselves. And they would never say it was Hooke who developed this apparatus. In fact, Newton and Hooke hated one another throughout their lives. Hooke because he was jealous of Newton, Newton because he, he thought, do we really need this nomad scientist, this minor scientist? Can we do everything ourselves in an axiomatic way? Do we really need people touching materials? So Hooke was the first one who, you know, loaded, you put a spring, attach it to a, a let's just put it here, to the spring, and then hung a load on it, to stretch it to a certain weight and then put double that weight, call it 2W, double the weight, and notice that the length got even longer and kept doing it like that and then created a little graphic to visualize what was going on. Right? In this graphic is deformation, and I'm sorry, this graphic is load. This axis. This axis is load, the amount of weight, and this is the amount of deformation as measured by measuring the length. And he just plotted the values. He had added one W, so one W was here, and then he measured the length, that length was there, he put a point right here. And he doubled the length, I'm sorry, he doubled the load. Notice that he doubled the length, so the next point was here, the next point was here, the next point was here, and so on. And then he just joined them by a line to complete the thing. You know, all the experiments he did not conduct it, but he could extrapolate from those. And obtained a pattern of the comp. This is called, of course, a linear pattern for the obvious reason that it looks like a line. It not only looks like a line, it is a line. Metals are very well behaved, and therefore they deform very proportionally. You double the load, you double the length. You triple the load, you triple the length. And so it's the simplest possible pattern of becoming. Hook called that Hook's Law. <laughs> Who could blame the poor guy, man? I mean, if he was being confused with Captain Hook and stuff like that, you know, he needed some prestige, you know? So, despite the fact that he was a minor scientist, he obviously was, you know, he was desiring to be admitted in the royal camp, right? So, let's not get to, to let's not get, be too ad admiring of him because he, he was a closet royal scientist. Nevertheless, he was not allowed to do that, so he remained a nomad, minor scientist, studying all kinds of things, all kinds of divergent things. The behavior of fleas, the, uh, the, the, the construction of bells, you know, all kinds of things that Newton and Boyle said, what the hell are you doing, man? Well, I'm following matter, I'm following divergence of matter. No, but we want to converge in an axiomatic with all the truths at the end. Yeah, well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> now, we have, in the 20th century, because material science, by the way, because it was a nomad, minor field, never got any respect. Metallurgists never got any respect. Metallurgy as a field was not taught in American universities until after World War II, when metallurgists had proved themselves useful to, to the military. And so it was at Northwestern University that the first department of material science and engineering is created in 1952. With, after a lot of lobbying by, 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 by minor scientists, by metallurgists. And in that laboratory, they have now discovered a whole variety of other patterns of becoming. I'm going to stick to the same idea, load versus deformation, because it's the simplest one. They began, in fact, also testing, again, in the same experimental way, which you test by adding one more load and so on, now, organic materials. And so, this is, by the way, this is the 